right, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna take a look at creating cue mixes in Studio One. So let's take our record mode off. I'm gonna change my record panel. And in this case, we'll be basically taking a look at this in a, in a mixing context. So let's get a quick mix going over here. I'm going to use, um, let's just use selection-based group to pull this all down. Um, I'm just gonna kind of start to build this mix. It doesn't really have to be anything specific, but there's a, there's a purpose behind it. So first of all, Okay, we have our bass. Okay, let's bring this in. Oh, this is our beat. I'm not necessarily gonna use this. Let's let's hide and disable this. I don't wanna use this right now. So we have these two tracks. Notice I have pre-fader metering on, which is really useful when mixing. We just need to right click any one of these LED meters and I can enable pre-fader metering directly from here. We can also do this while it's playing. One is this one. Okay, we got our strings and our winds. Okay, so let's say that we have this mix working and we're really, really happy with this. Now I bring an artist into the studio. They say, okay, Marcus, I'm ready to record. So I pull up a track, I record enable this. Let's say that I'm listening to the main outs in my headphones or in the control room. I have a booth behind me here, which is soundproof. So sometimes I will listen at a low level of my mains, but quite often I'll just go on the cans. But Regardless, let's say they want a custom mix, that they want something completely different. So in other DAWs, you basically would create a pre-fader send, and then you have the ability, in some cases, to copy your mix so that you can copy the mix to the pre-fader sends that you're sending out, and then it'll kind of match it as best as possible. In Studio One, we have a really elegant solution to the way that it handles cue mixes, and that is you simply go to the output. Actually, before I do this, let me enable my large console view so we can see everything here. I'm gonna pull my sends up to about here. And also, let's do some, uh, actually, no, we won't worry about the panning. Let's just leave things over here. I'm going to open up the IO setup, go to the outputs tab. In this case, you simply need to define which output that you want to use. I use the spit if out because I run an audience Nero and that has a decent um, A to D or rather D to A converter. So I could take the spit if from my quantum and then I can basically just toggle that as a source for who's ever in my booth. So I have QA enabled. All you need to do, just enable QA. That's it, it's done. You click apply, you click okay. Now you have a QMix tab that you can pull up over here. Notice this. The really great thing about the way that cue mixes work in Studio One is that by default, they're locked to whatever is happening of your main mix. So notice this mixer over here, 4.8. Look what happens when I pull this down or drive it up. This is actually changing um, what's happening over here. Just like that, I can change this. Now, if I wanted to unlock it, of course I can unlock it and then I can move them freely. But if ever I wanted to return it back to just being locked to whatever happened in my main mix, it's super easy for me to do that here. So that is just an absolutely beautiful way that you can manage headphone mixes because basically it just allows me to use my mix as a starting point and then whatever is set over here, it's just gonna automatically follow that. Now, if I wanted to disable anything altogether, it's just quite a, simply just selecting these tracks, I can disable things. And now I'm cutting off any cue mix from happening over there. A couple other things though that I want to point out. Let's say you have some tracks, maybe they're drum tracks, and let's say that they're routed to a bus. Studio One, very easy. We right click, add bus for selected channels. Notice that the cue mix disappears from the source tracks and it routes directly from the bus. This is kind of like a smart Studio One feature where it's figuring, okay, well, these are all routed from here. Maybe there's some plugins that are happening at the bus level. Maybe we have some parallel compression or something happening on some drums, and we actually want to send the QMix from there. So this is one area where this does this. Now, another thing I want to take a look at, I'm going to open up my browser, and let's go to our effects tab. And let's say that I had, actually for now, let's just use these three tracks. Let's say that I had an effect of some sort. So maybe I have, let me find, okay, we'll use this over here. I'm gonna drag this over to my sends. Studio One is really awesome the way that it works with sends. You just drag it into the sends and it just, it creates a send and it creates the effects return all in one shot. So 
One preference, which is not enabled by default, and it is super important, especially if you're working with vocalists, for example, who want to be able to listen to some effects, maybe some delay or reverb in their headphones, is, let's go to Advanced, I want to go to Console, QMix Mute Follows Channel. Watch what happens now when I deselect this. Let me move this out of the way. Notice we have a QMix Send from our effects plate over here, our plate 140. Watch what happens when I disable this, and I'm going to click Apply. You move this out of the way, it disappears. Whereas before, it automatically placed a Q-mix on the bus that we had all these tracks routed to. Now it's assuming that you don't want to. So when you have that preference disabled, uh, you are not going to see any sends coming from your bus channels. You will also not see any sends coming from an effects return, for example. So for me, I always have this preference enabled. The one byproduct of this right now, at least at the time that I'm doing this video, if I do a regular kind of like a default solo behavior wise, where I solo this track out and I'm listening through the main mix, whoever is listening in my Q mix, they will also hear that track being soloed out as well. So that's just kind of like, it's a drawback right now. It's something I've, I've brought up, but it will be something different than you're used to when working in Logic. So I did want to bring it up. So that is the basics. It is not hard at all. Now let's say I wanted to set up something else. So this is somebody who's in my booth. Maybe there's somebody sitting on the couch behind me there who is playing an electric guitar. They're going through uh, an amp simulator or something like that. Um, also, if the artist said to me, uh, you know what, I don't want to hear any of the strings at all. I could just say, cool, I'm just going to kill that. If they wanted less of this track over here, which is, what is it, percussion, I could just adjust this down and now it's temporarily unlocked it. I could relock it to bring myself back to where they were. If I need to set up another Q mix really quickly, just scroll to an available output, or you could add something if you wanted to, if you were not working with all your outputs, but let's just do that for now. I'm gonna add line out nine and 10, and I could call this QB, or I could call this GTRSQ, and then I will apply this. All I have to do is just enable this, apply and okay. Now we have two Q mixes. Notice that automatically, this is uh, the Q mix B, the guitarist's Q, has automatically populated directly underneath here. And now if they say to me, you know what, uh, I don't need to hear certain elements, it's very easy for me to either deactivate them or I could turn them down and unlock them. And the last thing to be aware of is that selection-based groups, as we adjust these, this is adjusting everything in the Q mix. If I don't want these to be adjusted or linked, then I could unlock this. And now I can adjust all three of these sends together so I could move things up relative to each other. So there's so many different ways to work and it is super useful. Last thing to be aware of when talking about QMixes is with respect to the click. I mentioned in a previous video that the click in Studio One is always linked directly to an output. So if I click my outputs tab, Two things to be aware of. Number one, if I want to enable low latency monitoring for a person who's using a queue, keep in mind, we have this, it's so easy on the main outs, but that's only for me if I'm listening to the main mix. What happens for the people who are listening to the queues? So I have QA behind me in the booth, which is routed to SPDIF, boom. Just enable this, now they're listening to the lowest latency monitoring path. I also set up a new queue at the very end over here. I'm going to enable this. Maybe I want this to be super bright so that it stands out. I'll change the color of this one and I could change the color of this one as well. Go to that same orange color. Now these stand out. If I wanted to put something like a limiter or something like that in on this channel or some compression, if they needed to hear something, I could just move over here to the Studio One Fat channel. I could add a bit of compression so that they're hearing something that's a little bit more exciting. If they wanted to hear something with an equalizer, I could give them a little bit of like a top end boost, a little bit of a shelf over here, adjust these things. And this is happening just on their outputs. And last but not least, with respect to the click, I mentioned that we can globally activate and deactivate the click by clicking the C or clicking in the GUI over here. Now, when I activate and deactivate this, this will kill all the clicks in the entire session. But if I wanted to not hear the click in my session, have it globally on, but I can deactivate this, maybe the QA, maybe the singer doesn't need a lot of click. I'm gonna pull that right down and maybe the guitarist who's sitting behind me over here, maybe they want a lot of clicks. So I can adjust their click levels independently. 
of each other. I don't have to open up any sends within Studio One. The click or the metronome settings when you're tracking within Studio One, when you're using QMix sends that are assigned to different outputs, this is all done directly on the outputs themselves. Keep in mind, I can activate or deactivate all clicks globally by using the C key, and then I can also leave it activated but choose to not listen to a click on the main outs or maybe the singer doesn't want one at all. Maybe the, I don't want any headphone bleed and maybe the guitarist, they're recording with a, an instrument level input into a software amp. So it's not gonna matter if they have a loud click. They're keeping everything locked down. I don't need to listen to it or maybe if I do, it's gonna be super low. And then the artist, they don't need any click at all. And then if I wanna kill the clicks for everybody, no problem deactivate it. Now nobody has a click. That's a wrap for now. Um, I'm going to be continuously adding to this playlist as I go along. And as I add to this, I'll make sure that I update the article on the blog and everything. But I hope that this video series has given you enough information to get started and confident when working in Studio One coming from Logic Pro. My name is Marcus Huskins. If you found this useful, be sure to like, subscribe, all that stuff. And I will catch you in the next video. Cheers.